Back in the 1900s, there were a lot of magazines that catered to women's needs. These magazines were made solely for the female audience, and as a result, some became very popular during that time. However, not all magazines survived the passage of time, and we will be talking about one of the best women's American magazines. Welcome back to the America's Trip Down Memory Lane channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the Ladies' Home Journal, one of the leading women's American magazines of the 20th century. A lot of youngsters don't read or keep up with the hard copy magazines anymore. Heck, some of them don't even know what a magazine is or why they still make it. However, for some of the older generations, magazines were a very good way to pass the time. As they contained a variety of information to keep you interested for a while sometimes for months by getting you to subscribe. The Ladies' Home Journal was an American magazine last published by the Meredith Corporation. It was initially published on February 16, 1883, and eventually became one of the leading women's magazines of the 20th century in the United States. In 1891, it was published in Philadelphia by the Curtis Publishing Company, and in 1903, it became the first American magazine to reach 1 million subscribers. The Ladies' Home Journal was initially developed from a well-known double-page supplement in the American newspaper Tribune and Farmer known as Women at Home. Women at Home was written by the wife of the paper's publisher, Cyrus H.K. Curtis, a woman named Louisa Knapp Curtis. After a year, it became an independent publication with Louisa as the editor for the first six years. The first name was the Ladies' Home Journal and Practical Housekeeper, but Louisa removed the last three words in 1886. It quickly became the leading American magazine of its type, hitting a subscribed circulation of over 1 million copies by 1903, also becoming the first American magazine to do so. Edward W. Bach took over the role of editor in late 1889 and served until 1919. One of the features he introduced was the popular Ruth Ashmore advice column, written by Isabel Mallon. After Edward took over as editor, Louisa Knapp Curtis remained involved with the magazine's management, and she also wrote a column for each issue. In 1892, the Ladies' Home Journal became the first magazine to refuse patent medicine advertisements, and in 1896, Edward became Louisa's son-in-law when he married her daughter, Mary Louise Curtis. At the beginning of the 1900s, the magazine published the work of muckrackers and social reformers such as Jane Addams. In 1901, it published two articles accentuating the early architectural designs of Frank Lloyd Wright. Edward introduced business practices at the Ladies' Home Journal that contributed to the magazine's success. This included the inclusion of advertising to offset costs, low subscription rates, and reliance on popular content. This operating structure was adopted by various men's magazines like McClure's, and Munsey's, about a decade after it had become the usual practice of American women's magazines. Many scholars argue that women's American magazines like the Ladies' Home Journal started using these strategies, Magazine Revolution. During the Second World War, the Ladies' Home Journal was a predominantly favored venue of the government to place articles meant for homemakers in an effort to keep up morale and support. The annual subscription fee was paid for the production of the magazine and its mailing to the subscriber. The magazine's profits came from major advertising pitched to families with above-average incomes of about $1,000 to $3,000 in 1900. In the 1910s, the Ladies' Home Journal carried about a third of the advertising in all women's magazines in America. By 1929, it had almost twice as much advertising as any other publication apart from the Saturday Evening Post, which the Curtis family also published. The Ladies' Home Journal managed to sell to 2 million subscribers in the mid-1920s, growing a little during the years of the Great Depression and surging again during post-World War II prosperity. By 1955, each magazine issue sold 4.6 million copies, and there were possibly 11 million readers. To say the least, the magazine was doing really great. In March 1970, a group of feminists led by Susan Brown Miller held a 11-hour sit-in at the Ladies' Home Journal office with some of these women sitting on the desk of the editor John Mac Carter smoking his cigars and asking him to quit his job and be replaced by a female editor. John Carter declined their proposal, but he listened to their objections, and as a result, they were permitted to produce a section of the magazine that August. They wanted the Ladies' Home Journal magazine to recognize a wider variety of choices for women's lives and give more attention to women's issues such as sexual discrimination and abortion. The magazine, along with its major competitors, Better Homes and Gardens, Family Circle, Good Housekeeping, 
McCall's, Red Book, and Women's Day were known as the Seven Sisters for a long time after the prestigious women's college in the Northeast. The name was gotten from the Greek myth of the Seven Sisters, also known as the Pleiades. For many years, the magazine had the highest circulation of this group of seven, but in 1961, it fell behind McCall's. By 1968, this magazine's circulation was 6.8 million as opposed to McCall's 8.5 million. American society was undergoing some changes, which was reflected in each person's magazine choices. That same year, Curtis Publishing sold the Ladies' Home Journal magazine along with the magazine The American Home to Down Communications for $5.4 million in stock. Between 1969 and 1974, Down Communications was acquired by Charter Company, and in 1982, Charter Company sold the magazine to Family Media Inc., publishers of Health Magazine, when it decided to divest in publishing interests. In 1986, the Meredith Corporation bought the magazine from Family Media Inc. for $96 million, and by 1998, the magazine's circulation had dropped to $4.5 million. The Ladies' Home Journal debuted a large-scale visual and editorial redesign in its March 2012 issue. Photographer Bridget Lacombe was employed to shoot cover photos, with Kate Winslet appearing in the first revamped issue. The magazine announced that some parts of its editorial content would be crowdsourced from readers, who would be reasonably compensated for their work. This arrangement was one of the first of its kind among major consumer magazines. Although the journal remained very popular, it ran into growing difficulty attracting advertising. Despite its high subscriber base of about 3.2 million, it was no longer a leader in the women's service category. These factors incited the decision to terminate monthly publication. On April 24, 2014, Meredith Corporation announced it would stop publishing the magazine as a monthly publication, ending with the July issue. Meredith stated it was transitioning Ladies' Home Journal to a special interest publication. It was then available quarterly on newsstands only, though its website remained in operation. The magazine was relaunched as a quarterly publication and at the same time, the magazine's headquarters moved from New York City to Des Moines, Iowa. Meredith Corporation offered its subscribers the opportunity to transfer their subscriptions to Meredith Sisters Publications. Things remained uncertain for the magazine, and in 2016, Meredith Corporation partnered with Grand Editorial to produce the Ladies' Home Journal. However, only one issue was created. In 1946, the magazine adopted the slogan, Never Underestimate the Power of a Woman, which it continues to use today. The Ladies' Home Journal's trademark feature is, Can This Marriage Be Saved? In this popular column, each person of a couple in a troubled marriage explains their view of the problem. A marriage counselor explains the solutions offered in counseling, and the outcome is published. It was written for 30 years, beginning in 1953 by Dorothy D. McKay, under the name of Dorothy Cameron Disney. Dorothy co-founded this column with Paul Popno, a founding practitioner of marriage counseling in the United States, and the two wrote a book together of the same title in 1960. Both the book and the magazine column drew their material from extensive case files of the American Institute of Family Relations in Los Angeles, California. Dorothy died in 1992 at the age of 88. Subsequent writers for the column have included Louis Duncan and Marjorie D. Rosen. The illustrations of William Ladd Taylor were also featured between 1895 and 1926, and the magazine also sold reproductions of his works in oil and watercolor. You can say that the Ladies' Home Journal magazine was a vintage magazine that stood the test of time and survived over 130 years. While it might not be as strong as they once were, they are still being considered one of the leading women's magazines in America for decades. Thank you for watching this video. Hit us up in the comments section and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.